like that. And here comes Hurst. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. And welcome to They Think It's All Over with David and Joe this week as a comedian who will be cheering on Scotland in the Cricket World Cup. He's looking forward to their World Cup single, which they're hoping to score in the match against Denmark. <laughs> Run the call it. With Gary and Rory is a Scottish Formula One driver who wore the same pair of lucky pants for ten years until he finally had an accident in Belgium. It took rescuers an hour to cut him out of the car and two hours to cut him out of his pants. <laughs> David Coulthard. We kick off with our excuses round where we ask the teams to guess the dismal excuses given by sportsmen to cover up their dismal performances. David, Joe and Fred, your excuse concerns the footballing machine that legend has it you should never write off. The Germans. Here's one of Germany's finest exports, Jörg Alberts, rifling one in for Rangers against Palmer in the UEFA Cup. But national team coach Eric Ribbick says he won't be picking Alberts or any of his fellow Scottish-based Germans. So what's Ribbick's excuse for ignoring their obvious talents, David's team? Now, you know that David's a national hero in Scotland. But, yeah. Uh, he it's doesn't not act. difficult, is it, really? <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't live there. And uh, I know he's been away in Monaco for a few years, so uh, I thought I'd make him a wee bit homesick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I brought from Scotland... Uh, a fish supper Ooh, from David. It's the uh, only place you can get it in the uh, newspaper as well. It's it great, is, isn't yeah. it? Uh, pass it over. Fred, if you pass it over, I'll break your f***ing arm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You live in Monaco, don't you? Yeah. You'll be able to walk to work, won't you? Oh, no, you'll need the car, obviously. <laughs> no. This is the same Germany that Scotland beat 1-0 recently. That's isn't correct, it? yeah. That's, uh, that's the, the one that our national side beat 1-0. Yeah. And I see you've written down 1-0 several <laughs> times on that piece of paper. I was trying to think who the other Scottish-based Germans are. There's Stefan Kloss, Rudolf Hess, <laughs> um, and the Queen <laughs> for the two queen. months in the summer. Yeah, the Queen. <laughs> Her mum's a jock. She could play for Scotland, technically. <laughs> She'd probably go in the side, quite honestly. <laughs> well, it's basically, is it not, simply because the standard of Scottish football is so low. The Germans think yeah, well, you were abso you're it's absolutely it's correct. Yeah, you get yeah. three points for that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the German manager Eric Ribbeck himself to put the record straight. I glaube, dass das Leistungsgefälle innerhalb der schottischen Liga nicht so ausgeglichen ist wie bei uns in der Bundesliga in Deutschland. Scottish football is one nil, wasn't it? It was one, one nil. nil. That's right. <laughs> Scottish football has had its reputation tarnished by events at a recent Celtic Rangers title decider. Referee Hugh Dallas was hit by a pound coin and then that night had his windows smashed in, presumably because he hadn't thrown back the change. <laughs> Scottish supporters are famously fanatical. One fan in Govan actually sold his house in order to follow the team abroad. With the money raised, he got as far as Darlington on the train. <laughs> Gary, Rory and David, Nicholas and Elka's goals failed to sweep Arsenal to the title this year. But look at Anelka, he's clear of the defenders, it's Nicholas and Elka. Oh, Arsenal making it look easy. A couple of months ago, the moody goal bagger couldn't hit a cow's arse with a banjo. <laughs> Into Anelka, oh, and he got underneath it, side foot over the bar. So to what did he attribute the alarming loss of form that cost Arsenal the title? Had he been reading Striking My Way by Gary Lineker? <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing. No, obviously not, because he shot from far too long range. <laughs> Mind you, he speaks better hard. English than you, Gary, eh? <laughs> <laughs> not too bad. It's a drink. <laughs> I love when David starts. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Was he frightened of being snogged by Martin Keown? <laughs> Was it that team orders meant that you had to always let someone else win and score the goal? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty like what he did claim at one stage, that uh, mm. he wasn't allowed to... Uh, is that not what he was, the Overmars thing? Right? No, it wasn't the Overmars thing. Was he whacked out with crack and hooers? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a sort of... <laughs> no? Well. Shane Blackburn went down. <laughs> 
wasn't he lonely and homesick? And, no, no hang on, I haven't finished yet. He was lonely and homesick oh, and Mark Overmars yeah. wouldn't pass to him and... No. Did he leave his homework on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> what are your excuses, Gary? Oh, boxes for. Um, What's that one you told me? I was sleepwalking, darling, and I went into the wrong hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. That's good, yeah. <laughs> was he sleepwalking? No. Uh, yeah. That's not a million miles away, then. What can be close to sleepwalking? He said it was close. Formula was One racing. Somebody hypnotised. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to hand it across. I think one nil. <laughs> no, no. Pressed to name whether it was homesickness, English food, or the fact that his teammates wouldn't pass to him, Nicholas and Elka said it was none of those things. He said he was spending all night playing football against ghosts in his sleep. <laughs> Another strange thing about Nicholas and Elka is that he's never actually set foot in a pub, which is odd because you'd think he'd spend half time with his teammates. <laughs> And Elka was so upset at being omitted from the French World Cup 22 that he left Paris on the Eurostar the moment the competition started. He shared a carriage with the Scottish World Cup squad. <laughs> and Elka's transfer to Arsenal as a youngster signalled the worrying trend in what's been called child labour. Arsenal have now signed a 15-year-old, Torino have signed a 10-year-old, and an 8-year-old was recently found wedged up a chimney at Juventus. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have no points and David's team have three. Now, if you've been waiting all series for a round that combines poetry and the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics, the good news is the wait is over. It's time now for our Sing When You're Winning round. We'll play some of the excruciating poems used to introduce teams at the 1992 Winter Games in Albertville. And then our teams have to supply the missing lines. To give you some sort of idea, here are a couple of examples welcoming the teams from Lithuania and North Korea. Oh, what a roar! The summit to mania! Cheering the team from far Lithuania! She races so fast that you just might not see her! The Democratic People's Republic of Korea! Well, thank God there wasn't a team from Nantucket. <laughs> okay, David's team, your first poem is the one that introduced the Great Britain team. The last line was, by the conquering heroes who come from Great Britain. But what was the first line? Eddie the Eagle's got a face you can sit on. <laughs> By the conquering heroes who come from Great Britain, yeah. Okay. There's not much snow where they train in Thames Ditton for those conquering heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Is Thames Ditton like the most working class place you can think of? <laughs> Let's think of somewhere that people all know. Thames Ditton! <laughs> they don't have a waitrose there. <laughs> At the top of the ski jump, some bricks will be shitting. <laughs> All of these, I must say, are better than the actual bombs. So it's a Winter Olympics. I wish the council would start the gritting. By the conquering Probably heroes. Yeah. No, no. Their names in the snow with piss will be written. <laughs> Your heads will be punched and your legs will be bitten. <laughs> <laughs> if, you get, if, you, if you get close, I'll give you one point. So. Look at Grandstand, there's nothing but shit on. <laughs> Smithen? Yeah, I'll give you a point for Smitten, OK? Yeah, and here is how the team was actually introduced. For the 16 straight games, our hearts have been smitten by the conquering heroes who come from Great Britain. Well done. Yeah, I'll give you a point for that. OK, Gary's team, it's the Chilean squad's poem for you. What do you suppose comes before the line, Hurrah for the team from the long land of Chile? <laughs> Hurrah for the team from uh, the long land of Chile. Um, <laughs> um, the soldiers put electrodes on your willy. <laughs> <laughs> there are national anthems by Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Pinking shears makes your foreskin frilly. Call <laughs> that by a designer rabbi. <laughs> You know this one, don't you go? And, uh, scaramouche, scaramouche, <laughs> can you do the fandango, <laughs> thunderbolts and lightning, it's very, very hilly, hurrah for the team from the long run. <laughs> Chile! <laughs> hey, uh, 
I'll give you one point. <laughs> Surprisingly, for the second part, let's have a look what it actually was. It's summer, it's winter, it's coastal and hilly. Hurrah for the team from the long land of Chile. <laughs> Is that the right way to wear a femidon? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now we have another go at this. David's team, we don't normally associate uh -huh. Turkey with the Winter Olympics, but what comes before the line, please welcome the team competing from Turkey. Their human rights record is exceedingly murky. <laughs> I think it's more specific. I think it's with that fat bird of a feather who's called Pauline Quirky. <laughs> Please welcome the team. <laughs> to win the gold medal, they'll have to be lurky. Right. <laughs> and what particular accent was that? <laughs> Kevin <Do> Ritten! <laughs> Pinky and perky. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Well, let's hear it and see if you could get a point. They're ready to fly. Their step is so perky. Please welcome the team competing from Turkey. Yes, Joe, you did say perky, but you said it <laughs> in the sentence pinky and perky, <laughs> which is a different perky, to be fair. <laughs> What's it got to do with you? <laughs> Right, and finally, Gary's team. It's those great Winter Olympians, the Australians, for you. What comes before the line, we're here to win medals for all of Australia? Uh, the weather's so cold, we've got small genitalia. That's a nice word. We've uh, got El McPherson, and I'd like to nail it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that's an answer. I thought you were just saying... <laughs> you will, but you were saying that before. Don't you worry. <laughs> failure? Not failure. failure. I'll give you a point for that. Here's the real answer. Listen, you'll hear them say, Mate, we want failure. We're here to win medals for all of Australia. There we go. So you've got a bonus point for that. And if you thought those are bad, look at what they came up with for Cyprus. <laughs> They're off at a dash, speeding like astronauts. Greetings we give for the champion Cypriot. <laughs> astronauts and Cypriots. <laughs> the choice of Salt Lake City for the 2002 Games was recently found to have been influenced by bribery. But the International Olympic Committee has now cleaned up its act, insists Omar Rachman, organiser of the 2006 Winter Olympics in Cairo. <laughs> At the 2002 Games in Salt Lake City, there are plans to issue all delegates at the opening ceremony with protective glasses to guard against snow blindness. It's not the snow itself that's the problem, it's the glare from the Osman's teeth when they sing the Olympic anthem. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have two points and David's team have four. Time once again for our photo fit round. We've blended three faces into one unlikely hole. David's team, who are we looking at here? This. That is Jimmy Neal's half sister. <laughs> I think I recognise the hair. Yes, yeah, Julia Roberts' armpit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was yours. In a, in a, in a I've never been ago. there. I've no. never been there. I think the mouth is Gaza before he had his teeth capped. Yep. Well, the top's obviously some middle-aged lady, isn't it? Possibly. Or Frank McAvenny. <laughs> <laughs> and the only middle-aged lady I know that's connected with sport, apart from Rachel Hayhoe Flint, <laughs> is um, Eileen Drury. For another point, yes, Eileen Drury. Good. And then the middle one. Footballer? Mm -hmm, maybe. Has he been on the show? He's been mentioned in a show. Yeah. In a show, I see. Or oh, in this show? No, in a show. Maybe this show. Is it Anelka? Yes, it's Nicholas Anelka. Oh, is it? Let's slip it up and just go through the dumb one. Eileen Drury, Nicholas Anelka and Gaza. Now, for an extra point, there's something that links them. Do they all dream of ghosts? They're all frightened of ghosts or something. Mm, I'll give you a point for that. Yeah. In fact, they're all reported to have seen ghosts. Eileen Drury naturally reckons she saw one when she was a pub landlady. And last year, Gaza claimed that when he was in Italy, he had a spooky encounter in his bedroom with a man holding two dead foxes. <laughs> a few years back, Gaza's controversial behaviour caused him to be dropped by brute aftershave. But he got his revenge. He hasn't drunk any since. <laughs>
Gaza's <laughs> son, Regan, is growing very fast. Only the other night, Cheryl said, look, he's starting to focus. And the baby said, give him another black coffee then. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne's baby boy is called Regan after the character in The Sweeney. If it had been a girl, it would have been called Bird in Bed with Carter. <laughs> Gary's team, three characters for you to unstitch. <laughs> I think one of those nicked my windscreen wiper at Whipsnade. That's <laughs> 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 definitely... Uh... Mika Hakkinen's hands. I do. Well, I reckon, first of all, the suit gives it away, yeah. the cuffs, but also I'd recognise his ring anyway. God, you are close. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's always behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'll give you a point for Mika Hakkinen. Yep. Can I check something in? <laughs> yes. I think uh, he's got his fingers in his ears. He's representing North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> or have we moved on? No, we've moved on. Right. Right. <laughs> the mast is Jim Layton, isn't it? It is Jim Layton, yep. Yeah. Very good. good. Which means the top must be Rupert Murdoch then. Yes, let's put it up and prove that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert Murdoch, Mika Hakkinen and Jim Layton, yeah. Now there's a connection between the three of them. Do you well, know what it is? That's how we worked out it was Rupert Murdoch because... Well, uh, how Rupert, Rupert Murdoch... Well, Manchester United, Jim Layton played for Manchester United. Why did Because we thought it was a Manchester United connection. Manchester he, United is indeed the connection, yet. Yeah. Rupert Murdoch tried to buy them, Jim Layton used to play for them, and Mika Hakkinen supports them. Well, of course he does. He's from Finland. <laughs> In 1998, Rupert Murdoch received a knighthood from the Vatican for his generous donations to the Catholic Church. The Pope got three sports channels, three movie channels, and the Asian Shopping Network. <laughs> in 1998, Jim Layton picked up an MBE for his services to goalkeeping. Then he dropped it, picked it up again, and dropped it again before the Queen slotted it between his legs. <laughs> Formula One is now, of course, on ITV, where they actually spend three days covering each Grand Prix. Well, they do have to wait for Damon Hill to finish. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have eight. <laughs> it's time now for our regulars to grope around in the dark and identify okay. someone by touch alone as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Joe, if you'd like to go up first, please. OK. Blindfold's on. That's all, then. All right. <laughs> You're going to have 90 seconds to guess who's come between you. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Oh, we won't get started straight away, eh? We've got plenty of time. <laughs> OK, and your 90 seconds start now. Oh. No. Oh, I say. Oh, and they've got a they've got a dress on. Oh my word! Just um, can you tell me where do you get your Viagra from? <laughs> oh, this is very dodgy, isn't it? Someone with a skirt on. Is that do someone they... with a really big flake? Is it? <laughs> is this Scottish? Possibly. Oh, thank you. Um, a right tosser. <laughs> We need to know at what level is, this um, tosser tosses. Is this why Scotland never win the relay? Is <laughs> 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 there a world championship? World champion, thank you very much, <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Fredna. Thank you, Fredna, thank you, Fletcher. OK, Gary and Rory, if you could go to your positions, please. Just before you put uh, your blindfolds on, you'll need gloves for this one. Yeah. Why have you need gloves? Never mind, just put the gloves on. Oh. OK, blindfolds on. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Quite, 
OK, and your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> That's me, Gary. Oh. <laughs> Gary, I don't know if it's you. How are you? He's not London, 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 London. London. Where, are, where are... There's nothing here. Get my own here. No way. Here. Look, oh, what's that? There's a box here. <laughs> Somebody's very nervous. Rory, leave it! <laughs> There's a box here, I think. <laughs> got 12 students renting it out. Is it the pizza delivery man? Because <laughs> the only sport pizza the BBC now. still has. <laughs> it's something wooden. <laughs> or is that you, Gary? <laughs> I think he comes from the long land of Chile, because if you look very closely, you can just see his willy. <laughs> It's some, it's some kind of trick cyclist, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, he's the big British champion, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Uphill and downhill thing. One of those... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very, very, oh. very famous man. Oh. <laughs> Look, don't make the man laugh, for God's sake! It's some sort of stunt cycling sport, isn't it? Yeah, and oh, he's yeah, got, yeah, And he's yeah, called yeah, Dougie. Yeah. Yes, Dougie. yes, yes. Dougie, but who? No, I always call him Dougie. We're, <laughs> on, we're, on, we're on first name terms. Dougie, right, Dougie. We're on oh. Dougie. Dougie Lankin! Yeah. And so the scores at the end of that round are Gary's team with six and David's team with eleven. We end, as ever, with the name game. This week, instead of reading out the clues, we'd like Joe and Rory to draw their sportsmen. Their teammates have two and a half minutes to work out who the pathetic scribbles are meant to be. The team in the lead goes first, which is David's team at the moment. Pass those down to Joe, please, Fred. Thanks, mate. As many names as you can in the next 150 seconds. Your time starts now. You see? <laughs> it's a ball. You see your card. Mind your card, Dad, Joe. That's it. Somebody with a Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> is, it, is it football? Uh, Liverpool? Oh, um, uh, uh, Fowler. Fowler, Robbie Fowler, yeah. <laughs> microphone? Tennis? Oh, oh microphone, microphone. microphone. John Morton. Well, tennis, oh, tennis. Right. Uh, Graf. Steffi Graf. Yep. Strat Graf. <laughs> Another footballer? With a tiny. <laughs> 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 that's, a, that's a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> oh, uh, Ronaldo! Ronaldo. <laughs> it's that's that's right. simple. That's Two right. people. Hand in hand. Beckham and Posh Spice. Smith and Jones. Who would you say? I Smith and Jones. Oh, not far off. Mm. Alright, Jones and Smith. Somebody's got. Oh, it's <laughs> Vinnie Jones and Gaza. David won't recognise that. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a sort of bottle or something. A cricket. <laughs> cricket. Um, bottle of champagne. Uh, uh, W. G. Grace. Got two P now, hasn't he? It's Graham Good. David Boone. Graham no. Gooch, and uh, is he an Aussie? Murph Hughes. Yes. Murph Hughes. Oh, surely not. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now, Rory is usually very, very good at this, but he'll need to be. You need 11 to win. Right. Well but I'm left-handed. <laughs> Not fair. Right, your time starts now. That's a nice easy one. Very cool start. thought you'd have got that. <laughs> I didn't recognise this one. Tennis? Correct. Which flag day today? Oh no. <laughs> Greg Rudetsky. Greg Rudetsky, thank you, David. <laughs> oh dear. Mountains? Mountains, uh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tour de France, some cyclist. Uh, it's that uh, the guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George Mallory. Very George Mallory. George Mallory. Okay, excellent. Right. Frank Bruno. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can draw a pantomime carrot. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, <laughs> Do a bit of Ralph Harris. Tennis you look again. like him. Go on. Tennis. <laughs> yeah, tennis. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Anna Kornikova. Right, very good. I'll let you get away with the Dwight York one because Gary's team have 13, but this week's winners were 16. Are David's team? <laughs> Our thanks to Gary, Rory, and David, David, Joe, and Fred. My name's Nick Hancock. The capital city of Moldova is called Chisnau. They think it's all over, and guess what? It is now. Stay with us here on BBC One. Zoe Ball and Eric Clapton drop in for a chat with Frank Skinner in just a moment. <laughs>